Good morning, everybody. I'm dressed in my Sunday best, even though it's not Sunday. And we're getting loaded up here with some lumber. So this morning, I uh, got up real early, went and unloaded those pipes that I had on my flatbed. And now we're replacing that pipe with lumber that's going to Minnesota. That's getting me down there. I have another load waiting for me down in Minnesota that's taking me back to Alberta. So the truck has been running great, knock on wood again. Everything has been as it should be. However, I think my starter solenoid or my starter wires connections to the battery may be because they, they moved that around like they disconnected and tested my starter right and the starter was working great they said it's like brand new starter on there so it was working great but I think one of the connections when they reconnected it may be not connecting properly because I've uh, scared myself twice now when I go to try to start the truck I turn the key and nothing that usually means that I'm either still in gear because I have a an automatic I know it's, automatic. it's a sissy thing I know but I have an automatic and if I leave it in gear, it, it doesn't want to turn over, right? That's sort of what it is. But that could also mean that power's not getting through the solenoid to the starter, which I could bypass that with a screwdriver easily if I could go underneath the truck. It's just Volvo puts <laughs> puts the starter like almost inside the frame on the side of the motor, on the passenger side, like right underneath here, where it's almost impossible to get to. So it's inconvenient, but good thing at least it's it's not minus 30 anymore. We are on our way marching towards spring. Thank God. Been a rough winter. Though it hasn't actually been that cold. This winter has not been as cold as usual. Usually it's like minus 30, minus 40, minus 60. This winter was actually pretty good temperature wise. But you know, if anything's gonna break on your truck, if I can give you any advice, if anything's gonna break on your truck, it's going to break in winter. Because cold just breaks stuff. That's just what the cold does. So if something's about to break, it'll wait until the coldest day and it'll break on you on the coldest day. So just be prepared for that. It's just how it seems to go. We're loaded up and trucking. We're on the way, uh, just, I guess this is just east of Calgary. What is this community area? Chestermere. Beautiful here, I'll wash the window so you guys can see. I'll clean your glasses for you. There you go. You can see past my wipers, these beautiful houses off to the right. This is a, a very nice community. They're building new houses like this, just a little further back. And uh, there were duplexes. It just, it looked like one big massive house, but apparently there was two houses in there. So when you go to buy it, you can only, you're only getting half a house, right? There was a big banner hung over one facing the highway. So everyone passing by could see it. So duplexes starting from $399,000, $400,000 for half a house. I'll give you 200,000 for the whole thing. 400,000 for half a house. Blew my mind. Man, housing's getting expensive. And it's even more expensive like in BC, uh, in the lower mainland, around Vancouver, where we were, where we got these repairs done. Like I said, like these houses on the right here, these would be multi-million dollar houses. You can't get a, a two bedroom bungalow in Toronto or Vancouver for under a million dollars. For an actual like four bedroom house, like a family house, you're looking at a couple million dollars. That's insane. Figured I'd point that out. I was just blown away. Just sort of blew my socks off. Good thing I have my shoes on. Yikes. Four thousand dollars, half a house. Half a house. And who wants to live in half a house? I want the whole thing. I, I don't want neighbors on the other side of a wall. I don't want to be able to hear what they're listening to on the TV or other things that might go on in there. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Wow. I am so happy living in the middle of nowhere. Oh boy. Living in these congested areas. I don't know how you guys can afford it. Like, what do they do for a living? Like, even if you have like a whole house, like $400,000. Like 
there's houses in Winnipeg and the new suburbs being built, up to eight hundred thousand dollars. That's expensive for Winnipeg. That that's nice neighborhood, all full services, brand new everything. You know, eight hundred thousand dollars. Now, I didn't pay that for our property. I didn't pay near that. <laughs> and I know what my mortgage payments are. How large must their mortgage payments be? How do you afford that? How can you buy furniture after that? Are you all doctors and lawyers? All of you? Oh, there's a cop sitting here off to the right. Sneaky, sneaky. If you're gonna catch anybody, you better catch this pickup. He's going faster than me. You stay there. Stay. Stay. Don't you dare turn those lights on and come after me. I am obeying the law. Leave me alone. Making me all nervous there, pointing your little picture taker at me. He took my picture. How dare you? How dare you? Okay, he's not coming after me. Good, because I was only, well, the speed limit was 80. I was doing 80. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyways. I don't go very fast anyways. I'm doing 95 the whole way home. That's like, that's 60, between 55 and 60 mile an hour. And the wind is pushing us too, so. I can practically leave it in neutral and just coast home. $400,000, half a house. Bonkers, man, bonkers. You know what it is, it's actually, it's words I can't say on YouTube, that's what it is. So we're in Strathmore, Alberta. I just checked all my connections on my battery lines and starter and solenoid. Everything seems to be good, and the truck is starting just fine now, and turning over just fine, so it must have been a fluke. I think I'm still just a little bit nervous after all those repairs that something else is gonna break. Here's the load. Taking this lumber down to Minneapolis. Got myself a fresh coffee. I can throw out my old coffee cup. Oh, got this garbage, I gotta throw this out yet. Okay, let's go through this. Yeah, otherwise, if I put it off, I'll be like, oh, I'll do it at the next stop. I'll do it at the next stop. And before I know it, I got like four bags of garbage. Always got to keep up with it. Dirt and garbage build up so fast. Okay, so I'm going to try this again right now with you guys here to witness it. See if it does anything funny now. Okay, so we're in neutral. See that? We're in neutral and let it cycle through first. Gotta turn on the air conditioning. It's hot in here. What happened, Diesel? Where did winter go? I don't care, man. I'm just glad it's gone. Absolutely. Okay, you ready? All right. Okay, here we go. Wait for that battery light to turn off on the bottom left there. Everything else, all the lights are off my parking light up here and I I cover up this light here because I put LED marker lights in the front and I didn't put the resistors in yet so the truck thinks that there's no bulbs in the front for the marker lights but uh, there is there is so I just ignore that <laughs> uh, next time I go back and uh, see the Volvo dealership in in well Surrey or Langley out there they said they'll take care of that for me it's just a simple code they can get out of there there's nothing wrong uh, it does still tell me when I have burnt out headlights, which I really like about this truck. It's one thing I like about Volvo. I had a burnt out headlight just today. Oh, this guy started moving backwards. I thought I was moving forward. <laughs> so they hit the brake. <laughs> but the one thing I like about Volvo is when I have a burnt out headlight, it tells me in here and it tells me which side is burnt out. I had to replace my passenger side low beam today already too. It's been a busy day. It's been a busy month. Things just keep going wrong. But now things are about to go right because we're going home, right? And we continue. So I don't know what was going on with the starter this morning. Maybe, maybe it was just sort of stuck in the mode where it thinks it's in gear, you know? Maybe that's all it was. Whatever it is, it seems to be fine now because I tried it again and again and all the connections are connecting properly. Ugh. 
but I'm just nervous that something's gonna go wrong because so much has gone wrong already. And I think we got it all, you know? I think we got it all, but I'm still gonna be nervous for a long time. Or for a while anyway, probably for a week or two, just. Turn left and then you know. turn left at 160 meters. I need this truck to run good. Like through the summer now would be nice. Until fall at least, preferably till the end of time. But uh, if, it can, if it can hold out on any more big problems until after fall or fall, that, that would be, I'd be very grateful. Whoa, yeah, and my wipers, those need to be, they still work. What? Leave me alone. What is that? What tarnation is that? Look at this. I'm at a little pullout on the side of the highway. Look at this load. Wow. It doesn't get much more Alberta than that. Just gonna go ahead here and park in front of him. No one's in there, so they're obviously parked there for the night. Okay. At least they didn't take out up the whole rest area again. Sometimes they have like four of them and they take up the whole rest area so that no one else has a spot to park and take a break. That's always a little bit rude, but gotta do what you gotta do. So husky in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Let's see if we can find any parking here for us tonight. If we can get around this pike driver here. Lose a, don't lose a tire in a pothole. Let's see if we can find some parking here. These guys are already parked up here in the front, which makes me think that it must be pretty full back here. But you never know. Some people are just lazy and don't want to park in the back. Oh yeah, there's some parking here. Lots of parking. Okay, well, we'll go around and see if there's any better parking than this, where I'm not right in front of the pumps. All of this back here is parking as well. Found a parking spot. And I don't know how this parking lot is empty yet. Because most of the people that got here, that parked along back there, got here after me. And I got up now before I'm legally able to, to leave. And I want to go, you know, get ready for the day, do my pre-trip and stuff, and then I can go. So I can get going in about 15 minutes or so. But if I can only get going in 15 minutes, that whole row back there, they should not be able to be gone yet. Because it definitely hasn't been eight hours since they parked. And there's like six of them. Probably seven or eight of them that are gone before their eight hours. How's that possible? They're obviously not on e-logs. They're obviously messing around with something. All of them, though? How are they all gone? That's strange. Very strange. Very fishy. But it is a new day. It's time to comb my beard and get on the road. I'm going to see you tomorrow for that, though. Click any of these videos around my, around my face here. It'll take you to yesterday's video and another one that YouTube thinks you might like on my channel. Click on my face there, it'll take you to the page where you can subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a video. We make a new video every day. We release them at 4 a.m. Central Time here in North America. We'll see you tomorrow.